Hey guys, you're watching DShack Tech, and today Apple has just finished their special media event, which took place on October 23rd, um, where they updated a lot of new Macs, including the new Mac Minis, iMacs, MacBook Pros, and yes, they did release the iPad Mini. Um, so with that, let's get right into all the new Apple products. So first up, they released the new 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina Display. The Retina Display MacBook Pros will now be available in 13-inch and the previous model of 15.4 inches. The new 13-inch will start at $1,700 with 128GB of storage and $2,000 for 256GB of storage. So now they have a combo of killer MacBooks with Retina Displays. They also have kept the normal MacBook Pros with the regular screens for the regular amount of money. If those prices of the Retina Display scare you, I would recommend checking into those normal MacBook Pros um, for cheaper prices. They have also updated the new Mac Mini. Um, the Mac Mini has not been updated since mid-September, I want to say, so it is a great relief that they actually did. Basically, they upgraded the internal specs um, to one terabyte of HDD or regular um, hard disk drive and up to 256 gigabytes of flash storage. It can now have up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, although it's being sold with four gigabytes of RAM. And it will have the new Ivy Bridge processors from Intel, and the new and the new updated Mac Minis will be sold at the same price points of last generation, so around six hundred to eight hundred dollars. This update was okay and expected. Um, I just wish they did some redesign of the product, but as an owner of a Mac Mini, I'm extremely ple I'm very pleased with this update. Then I think, which is the probably the biggest update, was the new IMAX. They redesigned the computer to make it extremely thin. Um, it is 55 millimeters thick on the edges with a curved back, um, so it is extremely thin. But on top of all that, in normal Apple fashion, they upgraded the internals as well and made it 50% more efficient in power consumption and weight. They have quad-core Intel Core i5 processors and advanced NVIDIA GeForce graphic chips. Um, they now have the Thunderbolt ports on the back, so now you can um, transfer files using Thunderbolt connectivity. Um, they have overall better better surround sound with new speakers. And probably the coolest thing they upgraded was what they call are calling the Fusion Drive, which is basically a combination of HDD, normal hard disk drive, and SSD, solid state drive, or just flash, in one drive. Um, so basically, you can have up to 128 gigabytes of flash with one or three terabytes of hard disk memory. You might be asking, why would this be helpful to a user like yourself? Well, accessing flash storage is extremely fast, while the normal hard drive HDD allows for a lot more storage in that drive. So basically, they took the best of both worlds and combined them into one, the Fusion Drive. This drive will work automatically in the background, putting in the apps you use most often um, on the flash drive, while the documents and other applications you hardly use on the hard disk. It basically saves room while still having the same performance of running apps as the regular flash-only drives. These iMacs will be in two types. The 21.5-inch will be sold for $1,300, available in November, while the 27-inch will be sold for $1,800, available in December. Um, these iMacs are really cool, and I would recommend you guys go checking them out for yourselves on the Apple website. Then lastly, they released, as everyone expected, the new iPad Mini. Um, it will feature a 7.9-inch screen with the screen with the same screen resolution as the iPad 2. So all the iPad apps um, will work seamlessly on the iPad Mini. Its overall dimensions are as follows, 7.87 inches tall, 5.3 inches wide, and 0.3 inches deep. It will feature a dual-core A5 chip processor and HD FaceTime camera, the iSight camera for 1080p video recording and pictures, and the new lightning connector. It will come in two colors, black or white, in two different models, Wi-Fi and cellular. The pricing on the iPad mini are $329 for 16 gigabytes, $429 for 32 gigabytes, and $529 for 64 gigabytes. If you want cellular, just add $130 to whatever size you're going to get, and that will be your price. Um, the Wi-Fi models will be available for pre-order October 26th, and the cellular models will be available in mid-November. The one thing I wish they did upgrade or talk about was the Mac Pro. I know they did mention the Mac Pro last um, event during the summer, and they just upgraded the specs very minimally on the website. I wish they actually talked about it, uh, mentioning what they're going to do with it, because right now it's just hanging in space and all those professional Mac Pro users are sort of hung out to dry. They don't know whether to buy it now or whether to wait another year because they've been waiting probably years at this point um, for an actual upgrade. Um, and they haven't done it. Just giving you an example of the Mac Mini has Thunderbolt, while the Mac Pro doesn't even have Thunderbolt at all. I think it's still on USB 2.0. So if that gives you an example of how far back the Mac Pro is, 
wanted them to upgrade the Mac Pro, but they did not. Hopefully that will be next year or maybe in another special event sometime soon. Well, that's pretty much it for this um, recap of the October 23rd special media event. Um, I'll put the links in the description box down below, directing you to all the product um, information. Um, leave your thoughts in the comments section down below um, about what you thought of this event, what products you think, well, what what do you think of the iPad mini, is it stupid, is it going to be awesome. Um, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, um, check my channel DShack Tech, and subscribe to notify when I upload more videos just like this one, as well as app reviews, product reviews, and OS 10 tutorials. Um, thanks for watching, and as always, see you guys next time. It definitely takes full use of the iPhone 4S and iPad 3 Retina display graphics. It's a big step up from Nova 1 and 2 if you have played those games before. But with great graphics comes some possible downsides as usual. There are many complaints that it crashes on older iOS devices. Um, I personally had no performance issues with my 4th generation iPod Touch except for maybe one or two crashes 